Hello, uh, welcome to my session. Uh, uh, I'll give a talk about the T-Clave uh, uh, in the incubator and how we make the computation on privacy sensitive data safe and simple. And uh, this is uh, Mingxuan uh, from uh, security team in Baidu. Uh, so on behalf of the uh, T-Clave community, uh, today I will talk about our open source um, confidential computing platform, uh, TClave. Uh, I'll start with some background and briefly introduce uh, current status and some highlights of the TClave project and uh, give you some recent update of TClave and the TClave internals. Uh, at last, I will talk about how um, how to get involved and uh, present you the uh, TClave community. Okay, let's get started. So currently uh, we, are, we are facing a, a big data error and uh, a lot of people and entities get involved in the uh, exchanging data, transferring data and uh, compute on the uh, data. Uh, sometimes the data are from the um, personal uh, sensitive information. So it's extremely uh, unsafe to uh, do some computation of um, sensitive data on the uh, service cloud cloud service provider without any protection. So uh, we see like a financial data, health data, a, uh, AI model, uh, secret key, anything. Uh, they want to uh, exchange such kind of data and to compute, uh, say, like intersection of uh, two financial uh, two data from different financial identity. Uh, or they want to compute like a DNA gene uh, from uh, the healthcare workers or health uh, or the uh, patients. So. Um, so we are looking at some like a data privacy technology uh, to enable people to uh, exchange data safely or compute unsensitive data safely. So, uh, so secure computing or confidential computing of such technology uh, is uh, the goal is to solve this kind of problem. So uh, we, we can see uh, Currently, there are several uh, directions to um, solve this problem. One is we can use some like uh, crypto um, uh, algorithm uh, to do the multi-party private computation. And uh, uh, also um, um, uh, to do the uh, private uh, machine learning, uh, multiple, uh, say multiple party, they provide uh, the training data and put into a, a secret or uh, safe place to train a model so that uh, different party can now see others uh, data, but they can uh, collaboratively together to train a machine learning model. So uh, we can see some technology like uh, federal learning to uh, enable such a uh, scenario. And um, the third one is like uh, we use like homomorphic encryption and I believe is transfer such uh, technology to also exchange data between different entities uh, which is which are now trusted each, each other. Uh, the last one is what we are uh, we are talking about today. It's about the hardware-based isolation. So uh, current uh, um, SOC manufacturer uh, and the CPU manufacturer like Intel, ARM, uh, AMD, and uh, open source uh, like uh, RISC Five, they all have such uh, technology to enable memory encryption and attestation. Uh, uh, basically, uh, they uh, split uh, words into different uh, in, into different words, uh, like in uh, for uh, Intel SDX, uh, there are two words, uh, untrusted words and trusted words. Uh, you can split your application into different words, and uh, for 
um, like code which manipulate the data, which is not sensitive. Uh, you can put it in the uh, normal world, uh, in the untrusted world, but the code uh, which uh, work on the sensitive data, you can put them uh, in the uh, secure world or trusted world. We call this kind of uh, parts of the application uh, enclave. So normally uh, this hardware-based isolation, they uh, provide the uh, memory encryption of the enclave so that uh, the uh, uh, malicious um, higher uh, privileged code such as uh, operating system, hypervisor, and like a BIOS firmware, they cannot, although they may be compromised, but they cannot access any uh, code and data inside the enclave. And uh, also people using this technology, they can remotely attest whether their code and data are actually running inside this uh, enclave protected by any uh, hardware-based uh, technology like Intel SGX, AMD SCV, ARM Trust Zone. And uh, uh, in recent years, we have seen uh, cloud service provider uh, have already uh, provided such kind of uh, uh, bare metal VMs like Microsoft uh, Azure Confidential Computing VM. Uh, Google Cloud has uh, the uh, um, AMD SCV uh, VM and IBM Cloud also provide such uh, VM uh, to enable people uh, putting their uh, sensitive information the code into the uh, public cloud service provider. Okay, so um, so as you can see, uh, if we have such kind of enclave, uh, people can put their data and into the uh, trusted or secure world to do the computation without worrying about the uh, leakage of the data. So that's uh, secure computing and uh, also called uh, confidential computing. Uh, Today, uh, we can use uh, the SDKs provided by different uh, uh, um, uh, manufacturer like uh, Intel had their SDKs, AMD has their SDKs, and uh, uh, Trustron the, has their SDKs. So normally we can use this SDK to try to build uh, an like SDX enclave, uh, Trustron uh, trusted application. Um, we split the legacy application into app part and enclave part. Uh, and also we can deploy the uh, legacy application in a containerized uh, uh, SCX environment or trust environment to uh, based on such like a, a library OS uh, concept or unikernel concept. Uh, however, uh, Sorry, excuse me. There are still a lot of effort for programmers to develop uh, uh, an SGX applic application. Uh, for example, developers need to know how to seal a data or how to encrypt a data and securely transfer to uh, the uh, enclave and how to do like remote attestation in the right way and how to design uh, uh, like uh, O call or uh, system call without leaking sensitive data inside the enclave. So uh, a lot of companies, they uh, put a lot of effort to uh, resolve these issues. They build, a, build up a stack of uh, firmware, middleware, and platform and framework applications uh, uh, based on the primitive provided by hardware. So different companies have different uh, um, uh, like uh, language runtime, library OS, and uh, uh, other things. Um, we, uh, Apache T-Clave, as you can see in this figure, we, we provide several, uh, we, we have several open source projects and uh, some open source projects, which is not developed by us, but uh, using our SDKs or some libraries provided in our uh, project. So um, so what 
our project I want to solve is to um, to make this uh, data, uh, uh, the privacy data uh, computation uh, simple and safe. So um, uh, we imagine as a clients, uh, if they want to uh, compute some sensitive data, uh, we need a kind of framework or a platform, a low programmer to uh, concentrate the, uh, their business logic or on code and data and automate uh, more production of their code and data without uh, worrying about technical details of uh, any uh, uh, trusted uh, execution environment uh, implementations like SGX and Trustful. So developers or users only need to focus on sensitive data, business logic, interfaces between uh, users and the platform, and uh, execute the uh, business logic in TEU computing unit deployed as a distributed system. So yes, this is uh, our TCLIP, our Apache TCLIP. It is an open source, uh, universal secure computing platform, a confidential computing platform, uh, which makes uh, our computation on privacy system safe and simple. Uh, this project originally de developed by uh, uh, Baidu, as, uh, known as Master T, our last SDK, open source in July of 2019 and enter the uh, Apache incubator. So uh, we are using TCLAVE as the project name. And uh, currently, we have three sub projects. One is uh, TCLAVE, which is a function and service platform. And uh, uh, the TCLAVE SDX SDK, originally uh, the Rust SDX SDK and the TCLA Trust Zone SDK, which uh, which which was donated uh, on uh, two thousand uh, this year, and uh, um, I will introduce some highlights. Then, and uh, you can visit the homepage and the repository to learn more. Uh, so as as I as I said, uh, uh, we want to uh, provide a um, platform which is easy to use, but also safe and secure. And um, so uh, for the highlights, uh, we can see in, in four ways uh, for functionalities, he can provide as a function service platform. We provide many uh, building functions and they suppose, uh, support tasks like machine learning or private settings section, uh, crypto manipulation. Uh, in addition, a uh, developer can de uh, deploy and uh, execute Python scripts in uh, uh, TCLAVE. So uh, more importantly, uh, uh, unlike traditional function as service uh, platform, TCLAVE supports uh, a general uh, secure computing task and uh, uh, multi-party uh, computation task. And the second layer uh, for the security, uh, we adopt uh, multiple security technology to enable the uh, security computing. Uh, in particular, we use Intel SGX, which is a hardware-based isolation, memory uh, encryption, and the testation. And also to uh, have a memory safe uh, an, uh, uh, platform, we use a, the uh, Rust programming language to provide a fast and memory safe uh, developing uh, environment and uh, also Rust can uh, give us a very strong uh, type system to uh, have um, uh, to avoid that type uh, uh, bugs like type confusion. So uh, in the usability of perspective, we build many uh, APIs, SDKs, uh, documentations, uh, COI and uh, tools and uh, we also uh, have document to help you deploy on the cloud infrastructure like uh, Microsoft Azure uh, uh, confidential computing VM. Uh, the last one is like modularity and the flexibility. We uh, have uh, several libraries which are important in the secure computing like uh, attestation and uh, RPC and so we provide this kind of libraries. Uh, many uh, open source projects have already adopted this kind of uh, libraries in their projects. 
So let me briefly give you some ideas of how how to use this uh, platform. Uh, since uh, TCLIF is a uh, function uh, as a service uh, uh, platform, users only need to consider about functions space logic participants. So uh, function is a uh, uh, is what kind of function you want to uh, run and uh, on what kind of sensitive data and who uh, participants is task. So. Uh, the uh, procedure is pretty simple. First, you register the sensitive data and the function into the platform, and then uh, you create a data and the multiple party get involved. Uh, and if they uh, uh, approve this kind of task, uh, then the task will be automatically run uh, inside uh, the uh, enclave protected by SGX. So uh, you can get the result and uh, the status of the task. And, and the APIs are pretty easy. We provide provide C, Rust, Python, and even uh, Swift client SDKs to enable such uh, interaction between clients and uh, our uh, TCLAVs service. So you may wonder internal of the platform uh, itself. Well, here is the auto, uh, overview of uh, our services in Kclip. You can see that there are several uh, seven kinds of service and uh, connected uh, each other, and uh, we split the uh, we split the service into three uh, domains: uh, front end, core service, and uh, the uh, workers. So. For each service, uh, they are protected by in, uh, the enclave itself, so that uh, your data uh, is protected when uh, transferring between different services uh, through RPC. And uh, the front-end service is uh, actually an authentication, and the front-end uh, uh, service are uh, in front-end domain, which uh, do authentication and uh, uh, for the uh, traffic into uh, management service. So for core service domain, we have storage service, which is a uh, uh, database and the management service to do uh, manage, managing the uh, traffic and do the access control. And scheduler service, at, at last your task will be executed on the uh, execution service with different workers. Okay, so uh, this is a detail of what uh, uh, what functions of different services. Uh, like for storage service, we have a level DB, and for the execution service, we uh, which is a stateless service, and it designed to be um, deployed in the cloud infrastructure, and uh, it also flexible and support all kinds of. SCX runtime and other T implementations. The uh, um, services are connected uh, by, uh, we call it a tested uh, TIS uh, RPC, and uh, we define the uh, interface uh, in the protobuf and here's the interview of the, all the interfaces of different uh, services. Okay. Uh, yeah, here's an overview of uh, what's the interface between in different services. Uh, for example, the authentication services uh, service is to authenticate the client ID on the credential and uh, uh, return a session key so that the client can use a session key to uh, um, authenticate the uh, front end service. Sorry. And uh, um, he can, the clients, uh, clients can also um, uh, register functions and the uh, data into the uh, front-end service and the, the front-end service will forward this task, uh, forward this uh, request into uh, management service and, uh, and then persistent the function data and task into database. For the scheduler service, it, it will uh, re uh, regularly fetch a uh, task which is ready for execution, and uh, the execution service will pull the task and execute the uh, uh, the task in the uh, stateless executor like uh, uh, SGX and other kind of executor. 
So we actually have three kinds of executor now. Uh, one is building ex executor, and one is a Python executor, and one is a WebAssembly executor. So for building executor, we actually provide several uh, several functions written in Rust, and which can be natively executed in 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 SGX. So for Python executor, we are using MetaPy for SGX. Uh, so that functions uh, written in Python can be interpreted in the uh, VM and the Python VM, also protected by the Intel SDX. Uh, for for the last one, we call it the WMR uh, runtime. It is a web a web assembly uh, runtime and web assembly executor. So uh, we want to support uh, uh, functions which are not. Uh, written in Rust and Python, but can be interpreted into a uh, WebAssembly bytecode, and it can also execute, be executed in our platform. So here is an example of what functions we are support in uh, in the building of an uh, executor. We already have like a echo, which is a simple uh, testing uh, example. And we also have like a gradient boost decision tree, uh, training uh, algorithm, prediction algorithm uh, functions. And uh, we also have that log logistic regression, uh, train and predict and uh, other uh, like a uh, face detection algorithm and the private job and the compute. Uh, basically, we have several um, uh, um, functions written in Rust to uh, show the capability of this uh, platform. And uh, uh, this is this one uh, for WebAssembly Executor is what we are working on in this year. And we actually want to enable some uh, uh, applications of which is not uh, that uh, uh, is not easy uh, before. Uh, we are using uh, like uh, we are using Apache TVM to compile or translate some machine learning models into WebAssembly, and uh, you can use that in uh, in our uh, platform directly. So the process is like this: we have different models uh, trained by different uh, framework. And uh, then you can use Apache TVM, uh, which is uh, 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 which is a compiler of this model. Uh, it supports uh, different kind of backends like uh, uh, native GPU and other uh, backends. But we are caring about the WebAssembly web backend. So uh, then you have the WebAssembly uh, bytecode. Uh, of the machine learning model and put that into uh, the TCLA web, web assembly executor. So at this time, you can use uh, this kind of model to do privacy preserving machine learning uh, like inference. So this is uh, uh, something new we uh, implement in this year. So if you are interested in the code base of TK, uh, here's an overview of uh, what directory uh, uh, and uh, you are looking at, like uh, testation, uh, RPC, uh, runtime configuration, uh, and so on and so forth. So if you want to get started, uh, you can. we have a lot of uh, document uh, hosted on our homepage. You can try and see our design and contribute to our project. So at last, I give give you a brief in, uh, introduction of our community and uh, for TCLAV ecosystem. Uh, for the left hand side, we have platform users which use our platform code directly, and service providers can deploy the code. Developers they uh, develop on our uh, uh, develop on our uh, code, and the library user which grab our uh, libraries and to their open source project. So for the right hand side, uh, we have seen uh, like commercial products, uh, academic research, and uh, uh, teaching platform in the universities and the uh, open source projects, which also use our uh, our platform. So here's an overview of projects powered by TIGLAF and. Uh, uh, I will give you some case study about uh, how they are using this uh, project.
So if you want to see the full list of if you are using TickClip project, you can come to this uh, Power Buy page and uh, you can add it on the GitHub and send us a pull, re uh, pull request. We are happy to uh, get more people uh, involved. So one case study is a product uh, provided by Baidu is a master T project, which is a confidential computing platform and you can host uh, privately and on the uh, public cloud. And the uh, second one is what uh, relevant to current uh, situation is uh, a safe uh, 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 contact tracing uh, platform uh, developed by Enigma, uh, which is a privacy preserving data sharing and an analytic platform. So you can submit your location to this platform and without worrying about your uh, sensitive uh, location information and the platform will be uh, will privately compute uh, your uh, location compare your location with the database uh, protected by SGX. so uh, normally you will be notified by uh, the platform if you contact some people with uh, the covid uh, so this is uh, another case study of uh, using uh, tclave uh, SGS SDK to develop some kind of privacy preserving uh, platform. So at last, I will post some uh, links here. Uh, if you are interested in our project, you can join join us of uh, our mailing list. We have monthly uh, meetup in every uh, Thursday. Uh, Tuesday, I think, uh, uh, Thursday, uh, every month. And uh, we have posted the uh, uh, Zoom link uh, on the whole page. And the, if you're interested, you can uh, join in. And you can visit our homepage for details and follow us on Twitter. And also you can check out our uh, codes and see uh, thanks for our uh, contributors and uh, we are happy to uh, have new contributors coming coming in uh, this year and uh, also call for collaborations and uh, contributors uh, for all the community so thank you all so i'm not sure uh, if I, we we have time to take questions but if you have questions you can write down uh, in the uh, chat uh, of the of the uh, system so i can see that and really read it and answer that so any questions about the uh uh the platform okay uh i haven't seen uh questions um in the chat box so um let me wait for another uh half minutes okay i see the question how is the uh, python code uh, execution safe given it has features like uh, garbage collection um so um Actually, I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand this question uh, correctly. So um, so you are seeing that if uh, an interpreter which have a garbage collection, it will not be executed safely. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. I think uh, what you are thinking about the, like the memory leakage or memory uh, collection uh, things in Python, if I cannot collect the uh, memory object uh, timely, so it will leak information. Uh, I'm not sure I want to uh, um, uh, clarify your question, uh, but uh, basically let me explain what we are, uh, as far as sensitive data, yes, uh, being left around long than you think in the heap. Okay, I see. Okay, I see the question. Uh, yes. Um, um, this is about the like garbage collector. How how you um free the uh heap uh, object uh, timely uh in uh in 
in the uh, Python VM. So uh, this is not not solved. This is an issue, but uh, this is not a problem in uh, SGX kind of environment, trust execution environment, because uh, for any object in heap and stack inside the SGX enclave, it's, it is actually protected by um, a special um, special uh, memory region, uh, which is encrypted by a, a memory encryption engine in CPU, like in Intel CPU. So every um, uh, if you have if you are a privileged OS code, you cannot access any. Uh, plant text inside the enclave. So only CPU when it had when it uh, load and store some information from and to this memory region, it can read the, the uh, data in plant text. So uh, in other words, uh, in, our, in our thread model, we trust that the CPU can can um, can access all the sensitive data, but for any other code, it cannot. Like a privileged OS, which is a malicious OS or malicious service provider. Uh, for example, like Google, if they want to access your code and data inside this uh, enclave or protected by uh, such technology, they cannot. So that's that's the uh, the uh, threat model we are providing. But yes, if some code uh, stay in the heap for a long time. If we uh we have vulnerability in our code, like uh, uh, data disclosure, such kind of uh, vulnerability, it still can disclose some information uh, inside uh, the enclave because it's a logic error or the uh, like buffer flow kind of error. Okay. Does that make sense to you, Robert? Okay, thank you. Uh, so any other questions? All right. Uh, I didn't see more questions from the chat. So, uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, I will stay around. And uh, if you have any questions, you can send me private message. Or, or also, you can open, or can, you can just, uh, uh, send an email to the mailing list of our community. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Start sharing and uh, thanks, thanks again. Goodbye.